Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Capturing Lee Miller, playing as part of 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. I'm excited today to be joined by the director of the film, Teresa Griffiths, uh, who is joining us from London. Hi, Teresa. Hi, very nice to be here. Nice talking to you. Uh, you're a film director with uh, over 20 years of experience. Your films were screened uh, in the UK and around the world for many occasions. Your documentary Capturing Lee Miller tells the story of Lee Miller, who is one of the most remarkable uh, female icons of the 20th century. A model turned into a photographer and then a war reporter. It's an amazing story. I just wonder, how did you decide to make a film like this? What inspired you uh, to tell this story? Mm. I'd known about Lee Miller for a long time, and I thought she was just the most inspiring, interesting, complicated woman. And as a filmmaker, I feel there are so many stories about women out there that aren't being told. It's not that Lee Miller's unheard of, but people, not so many people are familiar with her story. And she's such an inspiring character that uh, I really wanted to make a film about her. And then I met her son, uh, Anthony Penrose, while I was making another film. And I asked him about the possibility and he said, yes. That's great, actually. <laughs> so it's uh, your background and a coincidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, the story, the I made a film about an artist, another woman artist called Leonora Carrington, who's a painter. And Lee Miller took some of the most famous pictures of Leonora Carrington. And so I interviewed Anthony Penrose for that film. So one film led to another. Mm -hmm. That's how it came about. That's great. Uh, so we see in the film that Lee Miller is a groundbreaking woman a woman who chose to live uh, her life by her own uh, rules. As Karen Elson tells in the film, she's an artist and a creator as well as a muse, uh, a woman who is in charge actually. So she's a complex and sophisticated person. Uh, maybe for that reason, she lives different lives. Uh, I'm wondering, how did you manage capturing all of her different phases of life? Well, I should start by, saying in answer to that question that it's impossible to capture all of someone's life <laughs> in an hour. <laughs> I think, you know, the problem with Lee Miller's story is that there, were, it, there are so many aspects to her, as you say, it was impossible to capture everything about her. But I think for me as a filmmaker, the way you approach a subject is that you, you look at what you find interesting in a person's life. I mean, I could have made a six part series about Lee Miller, <laughs> But, uh, but for me, I chose the elements of her life which I thought were fascinating and that I wanted to explore. And I also think putting together a story, if you try and tell everything, you only skate across the surface. So you have to pick your elements of your story and then focus on those. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. You know, I was fascinated by her relationship with her father, where her experience of photography began. I thought that was, it's complicated and fascinating, the pictures that her father took of her as a, as a young woman. You know, I was interested in all the incredible creative relationships she had with other artists and photographers. You know, Paris in the 1930s was territory I'd come across before in my films. And uh, it's such an amazing time. There were so many incredible, inspiring people there. So I definitely wanted to look at that. And then, you know, the birth of Lee, when she stepped from one side of the camera to the other, in London in, you know, during the war, you know, she went from standing in front of her camera to standing behind it and suddenly took her own pictures, but she'd done that already. You know, she'd already been a photographer in Paris with Man Ray. She'd set up her own studio. She'd worked in New York as a portrait photographer. She'd done all kinds of things. And then she, <laughs> and then she managed to persuade Vogue magazine to make her a war photographer with no experience whatsoever of conflict or war she suddenly decided she was going to be a war photographer and she just took off and she went and did it and she learned how to do it and she did it amazingly. So mm -hmm. she was someone who was very bold and not afraid to try in a, in a world where maybe that was not expected of women. So that's why I loved her story. Yes, it's a great, great transformation actually. I agree with you. Um, so 
talking about the war photography, uh, Lee Miller is a strong figure, actually, who refused to be dominated by the male figures around her. Of course, uh, as you said, 20s and 30s were exceptional times. There were surrealist movement and there were other independent woman figures, such as Kiki of Montparnasse, uh, but Lee Miller actually took it further. Uh, she became the only female war photographer uh, in Europe during World War II. Uh, and the coverage she made about the war, uh, it became the cover of Vogue magazine, which contains very graphic photos. Uh, imagining now, it's like seeing dead bodies of Syrian refugees on the cover of Vogue. So it's a really bold, like you said, it's a very bold decision and she's a very bold woman. Uh, what would you like to say about um, these? Uh, uh, I think it was an amazing time and I think extraordinary things happen in extraordinary times. So the fact that Vogue magazine, as you say, published war, very graphic war photographs taken by Lee Miller in the concentration camps in Germany uh, is, was an extraordinary thing. And, you know, that also said something about the courage of the people running the magazine at the time that they were going to do this. But I think, you know, what was striking about Lee's journey was that she, uh, she used her courage and her, um, I don't know how you would describe, I mean, it's, it's like she wasn't afraid. I think somebody said in the film, she wasn't afraid. So she just took off and she did it. And I'm sure it was very challenging. You know, she, she ended up in Saint Malo during a kind of battle with no experience of frontline conflict whatsoever and managed to sort of survive and take pictures and find her way across Europe and make this incredible journey that led her to the concentration camps. And she was one of, not the first woman, but one of the first people into Dachau concentration camp and took unbelievably, uh, unforgettable pictures. I mean, when you when you look at her contact sheets, you open the folder of all her contact sheets. It's, it's unimaginable to think what it must have been like to look through a camera at those scenes. And, you know, those, those photographs are now important. They're part of the historical record, but they're also important because they were taken by her and by a woman. So she really blazed a trail. And, you know, there are now many female conflict photographers, but she really was one of the first. And as Lindsay Adario says in the film, who's a contemporary conflict photographer, you know, she says it takes a particular kind of person and she had the courage to do that and just the vision. So, you know, she was, she, I think it probably inspired a lot of women who came after her. Mm -hmm. Yes, like you said, maybe she's not afraid of trying. Yes. And that's what matters. Uh, so, and my final question will be, um, Lee Miller actually has a very tragic story. Uh, we learn in a film uh, that she was sexually harassed when she was a child. Maybe you didn't know this information when you decide to make this film. So I assume that you had some psychological challenges when making the film. Uh, can you tell us about the challenges you faced during the filmmaking process? I didn't know that story. When I first sat down to speak to her son, he told me that story. And so as a filmmaker, you know, I had to decide what, what to do with it and where to put it in my story. And I, I think the challenge for me was, you know, always as a filmmaker, you try and make something which is not casting judgment. You want to sort of present a story which other people will come to you and they'll make their own decisions. And in that instance, you know, I couldn't interview anyone about that episode really, other than her son about, you know, what he knew of the story. So for me, I just wanted to present what I knew about that particular episode, but I also decided to put it at the end of the film rather than the beginning, because I felt I, I didn't want her whole life to be colored by that. I dare say her whole life was influenced by that episode. How could it not be? You know, when something very traumatic happens to you as a very young child, I'm sure it influences your whole life. But, but I didn't want people to judge her by that alone. So that's why I chose to make it part of the conclusion to her story. as just something that people could then reflect on and look back at the story that they've heard and consider how that might have fed into her life. But maybe, you know, I, I think what was interesting to me is 
you know, when you see that she began as a teenager, as a model for her father, very boldly, I mean, she's, she's, you know, there are nude photographs of her as a child taken by her father. And, you know, what was very interesting to me was talking to Jessie Mann about that, who posed for her mother, the famous photographer Sally Mann, who's, and Jessie's interviewed in the film, and I wanted someone who'd been a child model to talk about their experience. And Jessie was very um, adamant that she saw that as a creative collaboration and that Lee had a great deal of courage. So who knows that maybe her trauma was part of the, you know, gave her the courage to live her life in the way that she did. I don't know, we can only speculate. Mm -hmm. I mean, after seeing the film, I felt like I would definitely learn more about this woman and it inspired me a lot, actually. So thank you for sharing this amazing film with us, uh, Teresa. And um, uh, is, if there's anything you would like to address that I haven't asked you about, please feel free to comment. I think uh, the only thing a filmmaker can really uh, hope for is that people are inspired by the story. And in this case, I hope it inspires people to go and look at Lee's pictures and to learn more about her. Because what you see in the film is a tiny a snapshot of her amazing life and her story. So go and look at her pictures and, uh, you know, find your, own, uh, find your own story in her images because they're really amazing. They're worth looking at. But thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining, uh, joining this Q&A session. You're welcome. <laughs>